Hey everyone, Anjita this side. Welcome back to AV Automation Hub. In this video, we are going to automate a scenario for multi-country application. So for example, you have an application which is supported in multiple countries or which is supported in multiple languages. So what should be the approach? How we can automate this scenario? We are going to look at in today's video. So there is website apple.com, which is supported in multiple countries. For example, in United Arab Emirates, it's AE. And if you want to check for India, the country code would be IN, right? So, so the base URL remains same, but then the path parameter keep on changing. So based on the path parameter, the country, we can say this is for India or this is for different country. We will automate this for four countries. So first one is IN, other is A. Let's see for UK. So in case of UK, it will be UK. And the last one, is for Canada. So we can just enter CA and then we can see it is getting loaded. So in this case, what will happen? The footer will be based on the country. So if we have CA in the URL, you can see this is Canada English. If I change it to A, it will be changed to United Arab Emirates. And similarly for IN also, it will change to India. Based on this path parameter, the, the country text would keep on changing over here, right? The, in the footer, you will see country name. And the last one, which we are going to automate is UK. So in case of UK also, let's see what is country name. So it is United Kingdom. So we will automate it for all the four countries today. So let's go to editor and let's start writing the code for it. So our website name is apple.com. I'll just copy the URL. So I've already created a basic template where I have mentioned my describe block and the it block text. And inside that I will write ey.visit. And inside this, I will pass the URL. But like we know, we have to test for different path parameters. We have to test for multiple countries. So this is not a good approach to write cy.visit, you know, multiple times and add different, different URLs. So instead, we are going to create an array in which we will pass the different path parameters. So how we are going to do that? So inside the describe block, I will create a constant because this is a country code and it will remain same. I'm creating it as a constant. I'll just name it as country code. And let's pass all the path parameters inside the array. So for example, first one is A, other one is UK, third one is IN, and the final one is CA. So we are going to test for all these four different path parameters, all these four countries. Now inside our it block, how we are going to call this array. So what we will do, we will use JavaScript inbuilt method, which is for each. So I will call that for each on this country code. That means I will iterate each and every value present in the country code. And that value I will pass in my cy.visit URL. So let's see how we can do that. So I will write over here country code, and then we will use dot for each. And then we'll create a callback function. I'll pass a parameter over here. This country parameter will actually hold the value of current element from your country code list. For example, it will hold all the values. It will have AE, UK, and then we can iterate based on this. Now I'll create a callback function. And inside this, what I will do, I will just cut and paste my cy.visit inside the dot for each. Why we are doing it? Because we want to call it for each country code. That's why we have pasted our code inside the callback function. And now I'll remove a because we are passing the dynamic value. So how we are going to pass it? We are going to pass it like this. So it's a dollar curly bracket and then I will pass country. So what is country? This is a country parameter. So this is actually getting passed in my URL and this will be called for each country code value. So here we can see we have single quotes in order to call this country. We have to pass it like this, a backtick sign. You have to remove single quote and you have to pass it like this, a backtick sign. So now what we will do, first of all, we will just run our code. We will see if it is getting executed for all the countries or not. And then we are going to perform some assertion. Now I'll just go to terminal and enter command, which is npx cypress open, select end to end testing, select your browser. And now let's select the test case. So this is my multi-country test case. Here we are going to see URL. So it's getting changed, you see? So all the four URLs are actually loading now. It's not only single URL, it's getting changed. You can see the path parameters. This is CA, we saw for UK, for IN, and for AE. Fine. 
next thing what we can do we will write some assertion inside our test case so the first assertion we will write is we will call cy.url and then to perform this assertion i will use it should include the country code so in this case i am going to pass it like this country so what we have done first of all we are visiting url for each the country and then we are verifying our url contains that country code or not now let's rerun the test case and let's see if assertion is passing or not so you can see the assertion is actually getting passed so over here we can see the url is fine the assertion got passed but based on the country code like we saw our country name was getting changed in the footer so that is the main assertion over here that we have to verify so how we can verify that first of all we will find the locator of that country text and based on that different country text we are going to assert it let's find the locator for the country text let's go to the apple website so this was our text and if i inspect the element in this case so over here we can see this is the element and inside this we can find our locator so if we try to find by area label this will be changing for each country over here we can see united arab emirates so we should not choose this kind of locator because this is based on the country and this is getting changed we should have some static locator in this case so that the locator is same so in this case we will use this title so if i try to search with this one i can see only one locator so what we can do this is for ua if i change it to let's say for uk let's see if our locator is remaining same or not so in case of uk also if i try to find the locator so now you can see in this case also the title is choose your country or region and if i try to search by this you can see it is getting searched we have one matching result that means the locator is working fine for ae for uk we can double check for other two countries as well let's check for canada and if i just try to locate in my elements tab i'll directly search it you see this is also working fine similarly we'll check for iron also if i check in my elements tab so you see this is same so that means this locator is same across all the four countries we can use the locator and we can perform assertion based on this fine now what we will do we'll just go back so now how we are going to handle it we are going to use a switch case so in the switch case what we will do we will check for each country code for example for ae the what should be the country name it should be united arab emirates to write all this code in the it block you can you can create a function over here also in your same class or a better approach to handle this is you can create a common command so what we will do we will just code commands dot js so which is inside your support package so this is our commands dot js and now inside this we are going to create a common command so in case if it is required to test in multiple test files you can use a common command in that case but the other approach is you can directly create a function also inside your same test class so if you want to create a function you can directly create a function but we are going with this approach of creating common command in commands.js so we'll see how we can create a common command so for that we have to use cypress dot commands dot add and then you have to provide the name of the command. Write verify country. So it should be a meaningful name. So what we will do? So I'll just create a switch case inside it. So switch, and based on the country code, we are creating a switch case. So I'll pass a parameter inside it. I'll pass it like this country code. Fine. And in the switch case also, so the switch case will be performed on the country code. Fine. now we can have multiple cases inside the switch case so our first case is for ian so this is the same country code which we have used in our test class so this is ian in case of ian it should return the country text as india we just saw on the application for ian it's india and similarly for other country codes also we are going to create different case in case of uk it should return united kingdom then the next case is a in case of a it should return us united arab emirates and the final case is for canada so in case of in case of ca it should return us canada and we need to write the default also so of default i'm going to return united arab emirates fine so what we have done we have created a switch case based on the country code what is this country code this country code is basically whatever we created over here so this is an array in which we pass different country codes so based on these country codes we have created different switch cases So for I N it will be India for U K it will be United Kingdom respectively for E and for C A also we have cases right and now what we will do we will call this common command 
which is verify country in our test case. So if we go to our test case now, and now how we can call the common command, we have to use cy dot common command name. So this is my common command name. So in the common command, we can see we are passing a parameter. So what is the parameter? So the parameter is basically country over here. So this is my country code, but we have created a for each loop and, and the country is actually holding the value of all the country code. So we'll pass inside it country. Now we have called the function, but the next step is how we can perform the assertion. So in order to perform the assertion, what we will do, we will use dot then. So the next step is we are going to find the locator for that footer text and then we will verify if that footer text is correct or not. Fine. Now we have already found the locator for this one. So this was our locator. Right. Let's go back over here and I will use cy dot get and our locator value, which we already copied. And then I will use the assertion. So I will use dot should. And what we want to verify, we want to verify if that text is present or not. So I will write over here assertion, which is have dot text. But what is the text? What is the value of the text? So we are getting this value from our common command, which is verify country. And now over here in dot, then I'm going to create a parameter. So I will write it as text. And what is the text? So this text I'm going to pass inside my assertion. So I'll explain you once more what we are doing. First of all, we are visiting the URL for different countries. So these are the different countries we have written for each so that we can iterate over all the different values of the array, right? Next step is we are forming an assertion. We are checking if our URL contains that country code or not. Next thing is we have created a common command. So what this common command is doing. So in this common command, we have created a switch case. So based on different country codes, we are returning the country text. So we can see over here for all the country codes, we have defined some text. We have for UK, for AE, for Canada and for India, right? So this common command we have called inside our test case and inside dot then I have Pass the parameters which is text. So this text will contain the value from our common command. So in the common command, we have different switch cases. All the switch case will return some value. So that value will be stored in the text, this parameters. And now I'm picking this text and passing in my assertion. Now it will verify the footer text along with the URL navigation. Okay, let's rerun the test case and let's see. So you see it is performing the assertion also. It is actually checking your footer contains that value or not. So we can see it got failed in case of Canada. In case of Canada, it should be Canada English. You can see the text is Canada English, but we passed Canada. Let's see. So if we change it to Canada, we can see the footer text is Canada English. It's not just Canada. In case of Canada, it's Canada English. So, so I'm going to change the value and now we will rerun the test case. Actually, this is a good case in which you can see if the text was not matching, it actually failed. So that means our assertion logic is working fine, right? There is no issue with the assertion logic. Now, if I rerun my test case, you will see in this scenario, all the test cases are going to pass. You can see now it is verifying the footer text, which is Canada English. So this is an approach to test your application which supports multiple country or multiple languages you can check with this approach and this approach can be followed for some similar scenarios as well we just created different country code a path parameter but let's we are passing some languages also so you can create array for that and you can verify in this format right so now we can see we have eight lines of code which is actually testing all your four countries but in case if you go with the other approach for creating different different blocks for passing different cy dot visit and asserting so that will be approximately 20 to 30 lines of code. And if you want to be a good automation engineer, you should think about a way to optimize your code to reduce repeating lines of code. So in the other case, we will be repeating the same line of code, cy dot visit and dot should command, right? But with this approach, actually reducing the lines of code over here. I'll be uploading more such videos where we will see some real time scenarios which we can automate. And these are the things which are asked, you know, interview. And these are the cases which we face in projects also. So yeah, that's it for the video. I hope you find it useful and informative. Please like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.